Podcasting alongside one Mr. Octavian. Go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. Hello, this is going to be my first time with Summoner School, and I'm very happy to be here. BC awesome. Jumpman decided to bring me in, and uh, well, I'm excited to prove myself on the casting bench as much as these guys are on the Summoner's Rift. Yeah, let's take a look and see what we have to expect. So you've been seeing some, uh, on the stream, you've been seeing some champions flash by, and uh, those are just their preferred champions. We just wanted to highlight something, kind of maybe not a comp that they'd be going with, but just some champions that they're looking for. But as I say that, we're going to be jumping in to picks and bans, so let's see what we're going to get here. Octavian, what are you expecting out of these guys? Well, given that these players are somewhere in the mid-range as far as ELO goes, uh, higher silver, lower gold... Um, I wouldn't expect too highly complex uh, compositions, things that require a whole ton of map coordination to pull off, but rather some of the simpler steps towards that. Things like a huge wombo combo team could be interesting, because if you land one of those gigantic CCs, like a Sejuani ult or a Leona ult, then you can easily follow up with the rest. It gives you something to fall back on at any point. So that's something I'm looking out for, and I like the Sivir Band, because that does help to shut that sort of composition down quite a bit. Yeah, one of the scariest things we saw in some of the earlier seasons was the teams that are able to pull off that kind of team fight sort of structure as, to their team comp. So the idea that uh, they might not win the laning phase, they might not win skirmishes, but when you bring in those 5v5 team fights, they are going to be dominant with their AoE CC, a lot of control and a lot of damage in an AoE. And the thing is with silver players, that's one of the team fight or that's one of the team comps that's going to be easiest to pull off. But as we get through the rest of the bands, it's going to be Sivir, Shivana, and Victor who are going to be uh, our blue team bands here. And on the red side, it's going to be Morgana, Callista, and Azir. So if you notice, it's slightly different than stuff that you'll see in solo queue. But at the same time, um, all of these champions are relatively expected. I'd say the Morgana is the only one that I'm unused to seeing, but that's just me. I haven't played in a month, so we'll see uh, if I'm just outdated at this point. <laughs> and right off the bat, we have a champion that fits into a Wombo combo-esque composition. So nothing away from what I expected here. Um, I'm also expecting, on top of that, things like the Jinx pickup. That's exactly what I was going to mention, actually. Something, the AD carries in particular, I want to focus in on too, because the late game is going to be so much more important in this game than in most, because lower level players, one of the places where they don't really excel is in pl applying pressure early on with champions specifically meant to apply that pressure early on. So games often go to the 35, 45, even 55 minute mark, and somebody like Jinx works very well at that point, but we have a swap back over. Yeah, so Corky gonna provide a bit more of that mid-range, maybe try to not let the game go to late game, like you were saying. Um, we'll see what they end up wanting to do here, the geolo uh, yeah, geology rocks, I guess. Um, I love the names. Yeah, it's great. Uh, the only other thing that I was going to point out was that, yeah, I really, really like starting off with something very tanky and very simple to play. Uh, it's very important to get this sort of bot lane domination. In these games, we don't expect to see any lane swaps. It would have taken a lot of practice for these teams to try to come up with a proper lane swap comp and just have it all click together. Uh, if they bring it out, so be it. But... I'm su I'd be surprised to see it personally. So something like an Alistar Corky, which is going to be a very, very strong lane, um, I am looking forward to just because I, I like the idea of just dominating as early as possible, shutting down the enemy team bot lane, and carrying that into a mid carrying that lead into a mid game advantage. Something that Corky is going to do really, really well on. I'm interested at the new new pick here because it's sort of complements both ends of the game. New new can have a ton of early pressure, which works in a different way than a lot of other early game junglers do. He's not about dueling, he's not about early ganking, he's more about trying to control the map and control vision, which is something that historically lower level players have a bit of difficulty with, but if you can do that, in a game like this, in a mid-range elo game, Unite or Flash, if he plays, a, sorry, um, it's going to be Panda KD on the jungle, my apologies. Sure. Panda KD, if he plays a good new new jungle, is going to really, really put a clamp on this game. Yeah, well, geology rocks. I mean, I think the geology rocks are going to need to come out with something that.
can take a new new jungle oppressing their jungle. Um, they need to sit, pl play someone who's going to recover. Um, I would look for someone maybe like uh, an Elise or an Evelyn at these at this point. Um, someone who has relatively good uh, early on dueling. Um, you know, Evelyn's going to be able to catch up because she's going to be able to get a lot of ganks off. But we'll see. The only thing that this Nuna pick a little bit scares me about is it does kind of restrict your AD carry pick at this point. So mm. the reason why you have you pick the Nunu a for the late game is yeah the team fight control but you also need to have that blood boil going at all times so a big thing to do is you need to pick an ad carry that's going to be attacking a lot to take advantage of that blood boil so like someone like corky maybe not the best or someone like graves maybe not the best with the blood boil on top of them but ash i think is a good pickup here she's going to be wanting to put out as many auto attacks to get that crit passive going um and echo is going to be the final pickup there so i wonder if so we kind of have this it could be echo jungle it could be new new jungle i'm not really sure yeah. and I, so yeah go ahead i i believe we're likely going to be seeing echo in lane a lot of his problems and one of the reasons why he sort of migrated to the jungle for a while were because he wasn't quite strong enough after the like rushed nerf that was put out once he was released and now he's been sort of rebuffed taken back into the meta a little bit and he might get some adventures into the lanes yeah, I, I'd like to see Echo in the mid lane. He's probably not going to be as strong as he was when he was first released, but you definitely saw that buff come out. And he's going to be taking on a Varus, so I wonder what the Varus is going to have to do about that. Echo, going to be really good as far as the link, uh, the wave clear goes once you get towards that mid game, proccing the passive and putting off those Qs. But at the same time, Varus, he just kind of wants to sit there, like um, build up a tier, build up a mana moon, and he can actually get going pretty early on. Finally, I'd say the biggest pickup of this game, we do see the Heimerdinger top lane. So I oh think that's going to be where a lot of focus needs to be because this game can be highly dependent on how that Heimerdinger pick turns out. So I'm Heimerdinger is he's good in team fights because he has such consistent AoE damage with the um, ulti turret. However, where Heimerdinger really shines is the laning phase and being able to shut down an opponent almost entirely. So I don't really know. They might want to swap Dysentery Gary around to try and match up against unit or flash because if they can get the heimerdinger echo matchup echo is going to have such a hard time fighting definitely. the tiny little yordle yeah it's gonna, definitely going to be a really interesting game uh the geology rocks going to be going for more of that mid game power and uh the spoon team I forget their actual is it lucky spoons Looney Spoons. Looney Spoons, that's it. <laughs> uh, they're going to be going uh, for more of that late game, but we are going to hit the delay here, so what we're going to do is we're going to kick it to a little bit of an intermission. Uh, we're going to let the teams load up, let everything load up, so there, I think we'll have a little bit of music playing and get to an intermission, and uh, we'll be back as soon as everything gets loaded into the rift. Thanks, guys. Stay tuned.
Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Rift. My name is Dune Bogey. I am here casting with Octavian. We're going to get into the first game here of the Looney Spoons versus the Geology Rocks. Octavian, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing fine, and uh, even better now that we have Dysentery Gary, who has a great name, playing Heimerdinger, who's a great champion in top lane, which isn't a lane I like very much, but <laughs> and I guess two, two out of three isn't bad. Yeah, that'll work. All right, let's run through the teams here just in case uh, everybody isn't familiar with the players, which I assume you're not. We're going to see Shade Hendricks playing that gentleman Nar here in the top lane, going to go against that Heimerdinger. Echo Mid is going to be played by Uniter Flash, uh, assuming that I read that name correctly. Uh, Panda KD is going to be your Nunu bot here in the jungle, and the bot lane for your Looney Spoons is Golden Beaver on that Thresh support, and I'm sh on Ash. On the side of Geology Rocks, of course, Dysentery Gary, as I mentioned, in the top lane, playing Heimerdinger. Heidi Sai in the jungle as Gragas. Lord Cole, alongside Lord Ultra Titan 96, will be taking up the two AD carry rolls, one from the mid and one from the bot lane. And Pocket Banana, who no one ever expects, is in the bottom lane as a support. All right, let's get this game going. We've got some early wards placed out. Heimerdinger started dropping turrets, and uh, we're ready to get going. Kid Hendrix does have the range to take these out, which is good. A lot of top laners have difficulty against Timer because, of course, a lot of top laners are melee, and so taking out the turrets requires taking damage, but Nar has the advantage of boomerangs. Right. I think he just needs to be aware of where those turrets are placed, uh, keep his placement in check, and uh, just keep spamming out those boomerangs, and he should be able to clear them out. Similarly, in mid lane, Varus should be aware where he's always placed. Be aware of where that little gizmo is coming out from the Timewinder of Echo. And uh, try to keep that harass as low as possible, as we see pretty much normal starts here from the junglers. Now, Panda KD got a very healthy leash from his bottom lane. Um, not sure if that signals anything. It does mean that Nuno had a little bit of a faster clear, might be going for an invade at some point. Then again, that wouldn't be too surprising, given yes, he is playing Nuno. I was going to say, Nuno invade? No way. I Ooh. like the early push that bot lane has gotten for the blue side here. They will be hitting level 2 just that little bit faster. Fortunate that Pocket Banana didn't land the Pulverize. It was a lot of damage he took, basically. Nothing traded back, but um, he's Alistair. He'll have some healing. Yeah, he should be okay, but yeah, generally with Alistar, you do want to try to wait uh, for that level 2 to get the Headbutt Pulverize combo. If you're going to go level 1, you either need to have the greatest opening of your life, or you probably just need to expend Flash. And even then, that's a very risky proposition, and it will be Thresh mm. missing a hook there. Lands the flay, but at this point, Pocket Banana has healed up from the previous damage. He's taking a lot more, though. This is... Multiple biscuits are going to be, need to be eaten here. He's going to have to take a few snacks before he can feel healthy again. Looking elsewhere, it looks like Nunu has already hit his level 3. He's gotten the red buff start, and he might be coming around for a gank in the mid lane, or, the better choice, he might be trying to eat a scuttle crab. But as he walks by, he finds out, oh, it's already taken, and he's going to be going back to base. Aedisai has done a very, very efficient jungle clear here, just hitting the important spots. Get it? Oh, nice! Hook and flay onto Lord Ultra Titan. Again, the trades being handily won by Blue bottom lane, or rather, my apologies, by Looney Spoons in the bottom lane. Yeah, I, I would like to see Thresh using those Relic Shield passives just that bit more. Uh, not only does it help you push the lane, but it also gives you a bit of health back without relying on potions, so you can actually save your potions on support and the AD carry. Not that Ash needs it at this point, but there's no reason to not use those when they're off cooldown. That extra gold income is incredibly important. Nighter Flash, knowing better than to face check into the bush there. It was... Oh no, he's still going in for the Time Winder. Lord Cole is going to be forcing the flash. He has the ignite though. It's burning. He might pick up first what he does, but he will go down for it. Still See, in that the was end. A hundred gold more to him. That was a really good bait by Varus, but he did not stay aware of the Echo passive. That Z Drive resonance does do a lot of damage when it gets that third proc, and he didn't keep an eye on it. Akabana is doing the best he can to try and mitigate this trade, but that's an exhaust on a Golden Beaver. Sort of at a unwarranted point. Yeah, I mean, that was just a really good hook landed by Thresh there at the bot lane. He took a little bit of punishment for it, but I don't think they ever were going to kill him. Corky's just too low at this point, and he's not ready to expend that heal. Yeah. Beaver is uh, doing quite a good job on this Thresh. He's, as you said, not made the best use of the Relic Shield, but he's been landing hooks, which is a little bit more important. And he tosses out another one, and it hits Sunder Lord Ultra Titan. Pakavana forced to use all of his cooldowns defensively once again. 
I do like the Corky having the patience, not popping that heal, relying on his ability to react in time if that Ash went for the kill. Uh, he didn't actually have to use anything. His pot's gone, so he will be going back to base. And he hasn't died from this lane, even though getting hit by two or three hooks here. So overall, you know, it's a lane that they are losing, but God, it could be a lot worse. Yeah, it's not going to be very nice giving Ash a level advantage, though. That level 6 power spike is so incredibly strong, but we have a snowball from Panda KD. Lord Cole with no flash available is easy pickings. Uniter Flash will pick up another kill this game. Yeah, Varus already burning both his summoners in that last exchange. Panda KD with a really, really easy gank. Varus was already cheating to that side. Um, he doesn't actually have either side warded, even though he has his uh, his trinket ward up. So a little bit of mis, uh, misuse of that ward should have at least one side up, and then you can kind of cheat to that side because you know there's nothing there. Just getting surprised out by the Nunu. Ooh, that barrel did a good chunk of damage for a sightstone built Gragas, but he does have good base damage. As Dysentery yeah. Gary, we mentioned this top lane a lot during the uh, champ select and immediately afterwards, but there's not been much action up there ever since then. Well, Probably, if, you, yeah. <laughs> it's if you if you consider Heimerdinger pushing in a turret over and over again and being 10 CS up on the Nar, then yeah, that's about all that's happened. Um, neither top laners really even needed to use a potion. Nar is finally going to pop his one there. Uh, about 5 CS down. But Heimerdinger's just got this setup going. It's not currently warded, and I'd like to see Nunu coming up for a gank soon. But Heimerdinger is in a very nice place at this point. It's where he wants to be at. To be fair, if I were to play any top laner, laner into a Heimerdinger top, which I would do with great reluctance. I say that now. Oh, actually, I might have to get back to that. <laughs> United Flash going in for a fight that he didn't want to pick in the end, but he can go back in time. Yeah, with that change to the ultimate, the ult is a little bit less uh, good to use over and over again just because there is a mana cost now to it, um, so, and he won't have it for another 90 seconds. So if that Gragas comes around for another gank, he might be in trouble. But at the same time, I like the aggression from the Echo. He's 2-1. Another oh. hook from Golden Beaver, this time weaved between minions. Pulls Lord Ultra Titan into a fight he did not want. Heels are popping left and right. A Phosphorus bottle nearly take down Golden Beaver, but he doesn't fall. And Pocket Banana nowhere near in range to finish off the kill means that we're going to be seeing Looney Spoons take back a kill in the bottom lane, but this might keep going. Gragas is waddling his way into the lane, but I'm Shush is, of course, going to notice the large fat man and back off. Yeah. I think the Corky got a little bit greedy there. He should have just taken what he could have gotten. If that Thresh had left lane, he would have been able to kind of get catch up and farm and be okay and not give up a kill. But instead, he gives up a kill to the Ash. The Ash is now ahead. The Ash will be going back with about 2k gold. She's got a lot of gold in her pocket at this point. And that Corky is now 0-1. Had to burn heal and flash for that and didn't even get the kill. What I'm surprised by... And this is a tiny little bit off topic, given that we did just have <laughs> a wonderful fight in the bottom lane, but I'm surprised that we didn't see Uniter Flash go all in onto Lord Cole as soon as he saw Gragas spot. I mean, we've seen him, ever since he got that kill, go aggro over and over again, but for some reason he felt the need to hold some restraint, despite the fact that he didn't know where the enemy jungler was right then. I mean, he did go for some uh, harass there, and he did actually end up burning Varus's cleanse, so Lord Cole is not going to be able to have that for the next uh, two or three minutes here. But I think United Flash just a little bit scared, not having the flash of his own, having to rely on that Chrono Break, which had just come off cooldown. I I'm just not sure if he was comfortable about it. And, well, nothing ventured, nothing gained, but also nothing ventured, nothing lost. So, either way, it's I mean, probably going to be okay. He, he misses 100% of the all-ins. He doesn't all-in, right? <laughs> I think that's how the quote goes. Yeah. So, who said that one? Was it Michael something? Nah, that was Wayne Gretzky, the uh, famous oh. Counter-Strike player. Okay. This <laughs> uh, is Gary is continuing to push top lane, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing has changed in this lane. Um, though, oh, actually, Lord Cole might be down for a Golden Beaver specialty hook. Uh, looks like he's not going to be going for it. Maybe he already threw it off screen. I do like the recognition from Golden Beaver there realizing that his ash was not in lane and he's like well that means i can't get anything done with lane other than soak up a little bit of experience if my experience isn't at threat right here if i don't really need that level six which he does but uh able to pick up a pink ward it's always worth it and potentially relieving a little bit of pressure from the echo or allowing echo to get that much just that much more pressure on Varus. pocket banana doing some vision control of his own however might be interrupted here by United Flash. He's going to come in. Doesn't quite land the stun. Hook flies out. Pocket Banana dodges that as well. 
In the quest for vision, Pocket Banana comes up with the gold. Yeah, but they're going into a level stuff. 6 Alistar there. It's probably not the best fight, and then they're also going to be potentially fighting 3v4 here. Uh, Gragas a bit Ooh. more of an offensive threat. Oh my. Bane of Corruption lands onto Shush over the wall. Heidi Sai is going to be following it up, and the damage is true. That is a dead ash. Flash forward the exhaust just for good measure. Nudu falls as well, and uh, now the dragon is nearly definitely there, unless there's some sort of miracle still. Steel. Yeah, you saw actually some really unfortunate timings. Nar had just backed at that point and didn't have his teleport up. Heimerdinger knew this, and Dysentery Gary TP down there to start the fight. Really, really smartly played. They knew they could force the 5v4, and that leads to the first dragon of the game. Uh, among that, uh, and also worth pointing out, the Echo not able to use his ultimate and not able to get off a good parallel convergence to try to get that stun. And so when Echo isn't able to press all his buttons during the fight, or at least do damage with them, it, it's probably not a one fight. That, that can be true of the majority of mid laners, really. You can yeah. say that about nearly any solo laner, especially at this point in the game, as we're coasting towards the mid game. That's when mid laners are their most impactful after that first or second item buy, and they just have such a huge power spike there. Yeah, so you see Nar played by Shade Hendrix. They're going to be getting the first turret for Looney Spoons and the first turret in the entire game. So it's not quite a worth for Dragon, but at least he does pick up something in return. I really want to see a fight between Shade Hendrix and Dysentery Gary, but I think that's just a pipe dream at this point. I mean, I want to see anything happen by Dysentery Gary because, you know, it's Dysentery... Beautiful double stun, but Uniter Flash is going overconfident with it. It was a gorgeous skill shot, but that doesn't mean you automatically win the fight, buddy. Yeah, and just not doing enough damage with that Morello Namicon. Varus surprisingly tanky with a thousand over yeah, almost 1100 HP there. Not able to do enough damage on the Echo and almost dies for it. If you saw, he was actually chained up by the chain of corruption from Varus there, and so Uniter Flash was just probably spamming that R button, waiting for that snare to go off so he could get back that health. Yeah, it was just a little bit off pace. Nar was roaming down. If Shade Hendrix had been in position, maybe they could have used that Mega Nar AoE to get some kills. Maybe that could have been a 2 for 0 trade, but as it turns out, it was just a lot of Echo's cooldowns burned for not very much. Yeah, I think one thing also to point out is that we've had this Varus use cleanse a couple of times here, and not sure uh, exactly the circumstances in which he used cleanse but it certainly wasn't ideal um, he did sit in that echo stun for a little while and I don't think his cleanse really did much else other than that um, so Got it might have helped a little bit here. but oh my pocket banana pops unbreakable will a few auto crits from I'm Shish but Lord Cole has been walking down the river this whole time and I'm Shish is going to be forced to flash out of the phosphorus bomb Golden Beaver popping the box to defend himself and his AD carry looks like they might both get out of here alive the snipe comes through the heel the movement speed buff and the health will keep them safe yeah Varys there had is a just... four man dive on the horizon yeah, he just picked up that mana mood, so they just hit that big power spike in the mid lane. Echo's pushing out, so they should have this tower pretty free. Nunu's gonna come around and try to do something about it. And so is Nar. looked for the instant burst, but the damage wasn't quite there from his ulti. Pocket Banana's going to interrupt Panda KD, but he's stuck underneath the tower now. And Shade Hendrix will get the kill. Yeah, so if you notice, there's three different members of Looney Spoons here. Panda KD, Golden Beaver, and I'm Sh are all extremely low. That just shows kind of a lack of focusing, A, from uh, from Geology Rocks here, but B, I think it also shows what a good job that Looney Spoons did at staying distant, staying away from the damage, and able to pick up a kill there without losing anyone. Yeah, they were swapping aggro. Good, a good <laughs> tactic to use against the uh, enemy raid boss. Swa yeah, swapping aggro under your own tower. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it worked out. They were playing on the psychology of Geology Rocks, they were getting them to swap from one person to another, whoever was highest, they were putting towards the front, saying, shoot me, shoot me, putting a big target on them. And in the end, they actually got a kill back from what looked like a disadvantage, dis disadvantageous situation. Yeah, I mean, the really odd thing here is it's 4 to 3, so it's relatively even in kills. Um, but if you look, there's like a 1.5k gold lead here for the Looney Spoons. So it's up to Geology Rocks here to try to do something about it. As you saw that Varus come in, try to gank the mid lane, but Uniter Flash is having none of it. Yeah, just a uh, Hail of Arrows slow is not going to be enough to hold down the rather mobile Echo. Need a bit more than that. Pocket Banana does not want his pink ward killed. I don't think he's going to get what he wants, though. 
Maybe if he tries, he might get what he needs. Yeah. Corky opting to go for that Triforce Rush, so he hasn't actually hit it yet, and we're 15 minutes in the game. That just means he's so far behind. He is even on CS, but you really need to start to get rolling when, once lane's phase starts to break down. So I want to see him pick that up as quickly as possible, because it, as long as he doesn't have that, he's actually really, really hurting in lane, and they can't really take fights against this Ash and Thresh. They're going for a fight with Dysentery Gary, and now they are not anymore after walked away. Wow. I, I never realized. fun to do play-by-play -play casting for. <laughs> I never realized how much of a counter pick, or that uh, that Geology Rocks there counter picked themselves with picking up that Heimerdinger into Nunu. That's Nunu's true. just like, that turret? Nah, I ain't about that life. Oh, the Unbreakable Will popped by Pocket Banana. He realizes Panda KD is nearby, and oh, the Crystalline Arrow flies wide. I don't know if they would have had the kill, but certainly not if they missed oh that. My United Flash is so low! Flash from Heidi's side! He goes back with the Chrono Break! He doesn't get hit by the Q! Finally, he will fall to Lord Cole. Yeah, so that was just a really good setup. Dysentery Gary had the grenade come down, pick up the stun there, and then you just had the follow-up coming. Lord Cole and Heidi CI were uh, doing a great job of lurking and popped out. Hawk Banana no longer has the ulti available. Had to use it last time, and this time, will be falling in the pretty simple, just straightforward walk at him and hit your abilities kill. Yep, pressing buttons does damage. Welcome to League of Legends. Oh, Shade Hendrix is playing the front line here nicely for his team, building up to that Meganar. He's got a few good targets for the ulti. There he is! Oh! He throws him the wrong way! No! He does land a very nice wall up on the two members, but that's not the more important cooldown. That would have been so perfect. The only problem is that they didn't. he didn't have much follow-up from his team, so he was going to be the only one that would have been able to do anything about that. An important thing to point out is, once again, Lord Cult using his cleanse to actually cleanse a Nar Boomerang slow there, so not going to have it for this fight, and they are extremely low attempting this dragon. Here comes Uniter Flash. Got plenty of AoE damage of his own. The Time Winder will fly back, despite being knocked away by the Explosive Cask. He still manages to grab a kill, and most likely we're going to be seeing Looney Spoons get Dragon right afterwards. Yeah, that Lord was... Cole might look for the snipe. That was so close to a perfect parallel conver... Oh my Lord goodness. Cole should not have looked for the snipe. Yep, he looked for the snipe, and but he what he didn't look for was getting sniped. Is it, is it really sniping if you hit them with a baseball bat? It's Albeit, not a, a very futuristic bat. It's a very futuristic baseball bat. It's a bat. sand thing. <laughs> it's a sand thing. <laughs> that makes it sound so much better. You know, you're, make, you're really making a case here for it. Sand thing, superior to baseball bat, apparently. Clearly. You heard it here first from Dune. Well, your name doesn't include the word Dune, so... I don't know, I mean, maybe that's a sensitive topic I'm, a, I'm an expert. Sorry. <laughs> so when I hear something like that... Okay. Whatever, there was a game going on. I'm sorry, on. I hit a nerve. Yep, let's... I'm just triggered, so can we move on, please? <laughs> uh, moving on. We do see that, uh, at this point, I would say Geology Rocks is definitively behind a little bit. How do you think they could uh, pull back into this one, Dune? Okay, so they just lost that fight for Dragon, just because they overstayed their welcome, they kind of realized, they thought they could do the Dragon, but ended up taking too much damage for it and stuck around. They are two turrets to one right now, so they need to start looking for that bot lane and top lane turret, so I would have Heimerdinger kind of sit around in that top lane. I don't think there's anyone that can deal with Dysentery Gary one-on-one, -on -one, especially that he's building into that Zonia's Hourglass right now. The problem is, you do have Shade Hendrix, who's a 1-0-0 frozen mallet Nar in your way. So I think you'll probably have to rely on Nar roaming around, and then you sound, send the Heimer top with that teleport, as well as this bot lane. I'm glad that Lord Call is pushing in to secure this tower. That'll get their gold lead just that little bit closer. You get Corky as Triforce, and then you start looking for fights. Um, I think the most important thing, though, is vision advantage. If you look at what Looney Spoons has right now for wards, they have the entire red side jungle near dragon lit up and i think mm -hmm. geology rocks need to spend a little bit more time or a little less time on river wards and maybe a little bit more time on lane wards and jungle wards i mean they've got the tools to do so i've seen multiple pink wards on their way through their inventories and they've got the upgraded sweeper i mean the upgraded yellow trinket rather for um dysentery gary which is a really interesting a really good pick for him it shows us that he is most definitely if there was any doubt at all, it is now removed. He is most definitely going for the split push Heimdinger strategy because that is such a useful tool for doing that. You can board up your side, you can keep yourself safe, and you can make yourself an everlasting nuisance to the enemy team. Oh yeah, it's totally, like, it's 100% the right play right now. Um, he does have to worry if he's going to get four-man ganked, but I think you're a greater worry if you're Lord Cole right now. 
Oh, Uniter flash. He does have the ult to keep himself alive a little bit, then he flashes onto the lantern to get over the wall. Valkyrie will follow him, but it's not far enough. And uh, he's going to get out of there alive by the skin of his teeth once again. Yeah, he will just be able to avoid that. A little bit of aggression there from the Corky. Lord Ultra Titan 96 definitely looking for kills that he can get. Uh, he just finished that Triforce, so he's feeling awfully powerful, and they want to make a fight. They want to take some sort of advantage off this Echo being low, and if they can cause or if they can start a fight sooner rather than later, everything will start to tilt in their side in their favor. Idea the size stole away the enemy Raptor camp, he's letting him know that he does indeed mean business. Hey, he, he, he basically he's here said. To play League of Legends. Nah, he said, here, I want the Raptor buff, but you know what? I'm not going to actually clear the camp. You can have it, too. He's sharing. Yeah. Greg has went to kindergarten. What do you know? <laughs> Must have had a very, very large juice cup. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> you assume that when he... I apologize. Okay. It wasn't juice. Um, anyways... Yeah, so with this Triforce Power Spike coming out from Lord Ultra Titan, you notice, oddly enough, that he's out of mana and he's in this bot lane. So he is not grouped up to fight right now. But this is kind of the thing that tends to happen with these sorts of silver games. You see a lot of players start to group up in the middle lane and say like, okay, the middle lane, that's where people fight, right? That's where we all should go. Where it might not be the best objective to contest right now. Heimerdinger, I think Dysentery Gary could have been doing work to that top tower a little bit more. You saw Corky, I like split pushing there, getting as much gold as you can if you're not going to fight. You need to maximize the gold income that you're going to get out of these all of these lanes if you're not going to fight. Just because you're behind almost 2k gold, at this point you need to do something to come back. And just sitting and waiting for a fight isn't the right play. Speaking of item spikes, though, we don't only have the Trinity Force. Um, that is a very important one to keep track of. I would not like to diminish your point there. I think it's probably the most important item spike in, well, the whole game, I'd say. But we do have a Transform on its way for Lord Cole. He's more than two-thirds of the way finished with the Muramana, so in the next few minutes we'll be seeing that shift around in his inventory. And um, on top of that, Uniter Flash has been doing very well this game has quite a bit of gold for himself, and has managed to finish off Morellanomicon and Azonia's Hourglass. He's at that two-item point that a lot of mid laners spike hard at. Yeah, so he's going to be doing a lot of damage. The only problem is, he is a little bit nerfed. Um, Echo not having quite as high damage as he did on release. And another thing that could kind of cost Looney Spoons when you get to that late game is that a lot of teams these days, you see them pick up like two to three threats. Um, that's like two to three players that are going to be doing most of the damage here into late game. And then the other two you generally look for as the tanks, the ones who are going to soak up the damage. And arguably, you almost have three damage or three tanks here on the side of Looney Spoons. So it's going to be incredibly, incredibly reliant on Ash and on Echo to be building a lot of damage because they're going to be the only ones doing it. On the flip side, you just have Gragas and Alistar, and this is more of the traditional two threat comp that you or two tank comp that you look for out of Geology Rocks here. So they're going to have a bit more damage, but they're going to have a little less tankiness coming into team fights. And I think it's going to be more into if uh, it's well, it's how much things like Nar can get onto the backlines because if he can, they don't have the HP to stand up. Ooh, nice hook into Dysentery Gary, but he's not choosing to go in on it because Uniter Flash gets chunked down below half. However, Chains of Corruptions did whiff there. There's a lot of ultis down. Here we have a teleport off on the side from Shade Hendrix. He's nowhere near Meganar, though. Dysentery Gary is doing huge amounts of damage. Golden Beaver will get chunked down for a double kill. I'm Shush now getting focused away. Heal pop to try and escape, but he's thrown back into the team fight. Triple kill for Heimerdinger. Heidi side will have finally finish off the Ash. Heimer does fall in the end. Oh no, Pocket Banana not quite close enough. Yeah, so that was just a bit late on the TP there from Nar, and yeah, it let Dysentery Gary end up picking up that dragon. If you remember, uh, Uniter Flash on that Echo was poked out to start that fight, and so yeah, that just went in Red Team's favor so, so easily. Geology Rocks had the tankiness, had the damage, and kind of poked them out before they, the fight even started, and so it just let them win that team fight handily. And if you look now, they are a little bit closer to where they need to go. They picked up the dragon, that's the second one of the game. They're going to be picking up their third tower of the game here, unless Golden Beaver has something to say about it. And yeah, this is how you start to pull back into the game, if you are Geology Rocks here. Well, they might be looking for some sort of follow-up. No, it doesn't look like it. And, uh... What, what I was... So... What I think swung that team fight so hard was um, the fact that Meganar was not anywhere near available. I mean, it's a hard cooldown to manage, 
Um, the most difficult cooldown to manage in the game, in my opinion. And it's what makes the difference between, not to sound cliched, a good NAR player and a great NAR player, whether or not they can keep track of their Mega NAR and use it at the perfect times. And Shade Hendrix did not do that in the last fight. But the game isn't over yet. It's still relatively even. They just kind of lost a lead. They didn't... They didn't lose... They, they didn't put themselves behind. They just went from being ahead to being even. Yeah, and, and I think they still can win teamfights very, very easily. You have good things out of Echo. You have him not get chunked down, and he definitely is still will remain a threat. If you have the Narbar where you need it to be, it can also work really, really well in your favor. It's just something to be aware of going to future fights, is you need to play around the Nar TP and the Nar uh, bar if you're going to be looking for those TP engages. The good thing, though, speaking of the Nar bar, is that they can't... Oh. Golden Beaver might be looking for a play here. No, it doesn't look like it. But uh, they can choose their fights around when that happens. Ash is a great AD carry for helping Nar out. Because a lot of teams will back away once they see that red bar fully filled up. But you can't back away off the map. Ash can still hit you no matter where you are. So having that ability to pick a fight could be really, really instrumental for um, Looney Spoons moving forward. Yeah, I, I think they need to start looking for these types of engages like we're seeing here in the mid lane. Their flash. Get some good chunk on the Lord Cole. He's got more gap closers than Lord Cole has escapes, given that he's Varus and doesn't have any. Pocket Banana now gonna be popping Unbreakable Will to try and get out of this 3v2. He's a very, very tanky cow, instantly interrupting Panda KD as the Absolute Zero channels. But no matter how tanky he is, he will eventually fall if the damage just keeps coming through. Yeah, I think Geology Rocks kind of needs to recognize that the Echo is going to be a problem in this game. They need to uh, deal with him in a way... Oh my god, it's a TP coming out from Heimerdinger. Can Isn't he do Gary. He's coming in for the fight, but he gets chunked incredibly low. He doesn't have the... He did have the Zonius, but he didn't use it in time. He's going to be falling over before he can get any kills. And now everybody's escaping with barely any health left. The shield keeps Panda KD alive. Now an auto follows him through the Dark Passage. And Lord Ultra Titan... We'll be giving up his life as he overextends to try and clean up that kill. Yeah, that was the second or third time that you saw the Corky pull a wild turtle, just go way too deep for the kill. A kill that didn't even really matter. He did end up picking it up in the end with the final uh, with the final rocket onto the Nunu. But yeah, just a weird TP flank coming from Dysentery Gary. I like where his mind's at, but he needs to be aware of, uh, basically, he needs to be aware of what cooldowns are off, are on and off, because Threshbox and Ash Arrow were still up at that point. If you, There's no reason you TP into a fight when those cooldowns are still up, because you need to, like, you you, you know they're just going to do that right on your face. You're, you're Heimerdinger, you're scary, and you are not very strong. And not unless you have some larger trump card that you can play to sort of counter out that pressure that the enemy is going to have. But uh, that could have been the Zonia's Hourglass, potentially dodging away from the Ash Arrow with that, but just didn't anticipate that much of an instant reaction. Perhaps he didn't realize the bush was warded. Unitor Flash is going again <laughs> incredibly aggressive. Lord Goal is going to be able to back up this time, but that's uh, the Varus ulti and cleanse down. Yeah, I love the aggression coming out from this Echo. He needs to be making plays in this game, and he is. Um, he's six three and two. He's gonna be the main. Isn't Terry Gary? Oh my! Down the bottom goodness. lane, and he's making some mistakes again. I'm sure nearly goes down, but that is a killing spree for the Ash. Yeah. So, I'm sh actually ended up picking up a red pot there. That's <laughs> kind of what helped her stay alive there. Um, oh. I, I like the idea what Dysentery Gary was going for, but once again, you have Zonias and you don't use it. There's something wrong. There's a reason why you buy that item, and it isn't for the 100 AP. The 100 AP is nice, sure, but... Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. If, if you just want an AP item, death cap all the way. Hats are very dangerous. Indeed. So, uh, I like the pickoffs that have been coming out from... Uh, from Looney Spoons here, but they need to do something with it, and that something looks to be Dragon spawning up here in the next five seconds. We'll see if they can take advantage of Timer's TP not being up. But once again, the Narbar is completely empty. And, well, they have that as a disadvantage, but as an advantage, Looney Spoons has vision nearly all over the entire area here. Actually, I'm looking on the map, and they have vision in every corner of the jungle near the Dragon, so if a play is made, they will know about it. Right. And hopefully they'll be able to make some plays. 
the problem here is that once again we've seen what uh, poke happens near the dragon, what that spells, and that spells Echo and Ash potentially getting chunked. If uh, if Geology Rocks, if specifically Lord Cole and Dysentery Gary can get off their poke, can get off some of their damage onto Ash and Echo, they're going to have trouble starting this fight. Volley starts up the dragon, and the side of Geology Rocks just says, sure, we'll go with it. But maybe that was the wrong choice. Dysentery Gary is going to get chunked down. I'm Shush is on a rampage at this point. Nice Gnarlzy against the wall, going to be stunning up both Gragas and Varus. Shade Hendricks will flash to follow up over that tiny little wall. And nobody is going down. Everybody is so low. Looney Spoons is playing this perfectly, swapping aggro again and again, just like last time. Yeah, you notice that none of them have actually ended up uh, dying in this game, er, in this uh, fight here, and that's really, really well played. They're even going to be able to pick up the Gragas Ooh. kill unless he flashes away. Ash is still going chase. for it. Yeah, she will pick it up. Picks it up. So yeah, that fight was extremely important because of a couple different reasons. One, it's that second dragon, you even out the dragons, and you kind of saw a, a comeback starting to maybe happen from Geology Rocks here, but denied coming out from the Looney Spoons. A great Asher catches out the Heimerdinger, once again, not able to use that Zonius. Immediately, immediately picked off. And then right after that, you notice that Panda KD got off almost a full channel ultimate here on Nunu. So he was able to not only do a lot of damage with that, but also... He controlled a lot of that fight with the slow coming out. He allowed a lot of damage coming out from Echo and Ash to go down, and it allowed his team to win the fight pretty easily, not to mention the extreme well-set-up Nar ult there. Doing a good job here, Shane Hed Shade Hendricks. Yeah, I mean, during Champion Select in the early game, I was, I was, in, I was a little bit scared, honestly, for the amount of team presence that uh, Geology Rocks has, the amount of ability to control a team fight with zones, but... That might have blinded me to the fact that Looney Spoons is nearly equally good at doing that with their comp. As you said, the fully channeled Nunu ulti, I'm shush with the beautiful Ash Hour landing right where it needs to go. And then all the AoE that an Echo offers, they've got their own ability to control a teamfight, and they're just executing it a little bit better, which I think is d demonstrated by the way the health bars looked at the end of the fight. Yeah, and I, th I think they can play kind of a, a more passive game. The only problem is that I think the late game still goes to Geology Rocks here. The Alistar damage reduction once he hits that level 16 is insane. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that they potentially can put out a lot more damage, and if they can get the pickoffs on Echo and Ash, they can win fights. Basically, if Echo doesn't isn't able to get off his ultimate, isn't able to get off a of parallel convergence, and you pick him off early in the fight, he's just... That, that team fight is already over. Echo's damage is so, so important. It's one of the main magic damage components on the entire team. And uh, I think that's what the kind of pickoff that they should be going here from someone like Pocket Banana on that Alistar. Vision battles in the top side of the map here. Dancing around the Baron, that might be the next major objective in the sights for both of these teams. Yeah, I mean... I think Geology Rocks wins the poke war just by virtue of having Varus, though. Yeah, Varus and Heimerdinger can help them win the poke war. Also, if they get the poke off on the right people, again, if they get it off on I'm Sh and Uniter Flash, then it's just like game over at that point. Um, I like what Looney Spoons was doing, going for the vision advantage. Uh, they're going to have to back up here to defend their tier 2, but once you win that fight, you get the dragon and you're up 5k gold, you do want to be looking for more fights to try and snowball your lead just that much more. Yeah, well... Where could they find those favorable fights? What what situation leads to Looney Spoons coming out on top in the fight? Well, it, so, do they have to push some waves? Do they have to get a pick? I mean, yeah, you need favorable wave advantage, so that's why Ash is going down to clear that right now. But really what they need to be looking for, they need to realize that they've had vision advantage this entire game. And what vision advantage allows you to do is make these really, really good plays and these really, really good pickoffs. And what you want to do is find two or three members isolated and bring your whole five-man group there and get that pickoff. So if you notice here, three members of Geology Rocks have split off to the top lane. So if they got the pickoff in the Alistar or Corky there, both of whom they see, that would be an excellent, excellent advantage to get some sort of, uh, some sort of numbers advantage and then go for that Baron. And they had the potential to go for that as well with Pocket Banana. He was a little bit too far up in the river there, and we do have a Righteous Glory on that Nunu already completed. They have the ability to chase down these fights, they just need to pull the trigger more. Yeah, and I like what they're doing here. They completely out-rotated Geology Rocks, um, recognizing that, yeah, hey, after we push this wave up, it does end up hitting Turret. And uh, Varus going back 
to pick up um, kind of some non-meaningful items. Probably not worth it. I think that a little bit better response was needed there from Geology Rocks, because they just gave up that turret for free. Speaking of items, I'd like to look into Lord Ultra Titan 96's inventory here. He's come with a Blade of the Ruined King second. There is a fairly decent amount of tankiness, as you mentioned, on the enemy team, so having that extra percentage health damage will be nice, but it does kind of weaken his damage, I would say, for the next few minutes, um, int until the next item that he picks up. He doesn't have as much raw AD behind his auto attacks. Yeah, I I'd like to see him maybe pick off a Bloodthirster as well. I think that would really, really help him if there's a lot of dive coming out as far as the Gnar, which you've noticed has gotten on the back lines as well as the Echo. I think that could really, really benefit him, especially considering how aggressive he wants to play. That extra shield can could allow him to facilitate that aggression just a little bit more. But the, the real reason why... Uh, I think the quirky item choice is significant here is when you compare it to what Ash has got going on. Um, I'm sh has over 2k more gold than Lord Ultra Titan at this point, and it's allowed her to pick up not only her two items, but as well as a BF Sword and Vampiric Scepter. That Ash will be hitting that Bloodthirster mark so much faster than the quirky at this point. And Ash's gold advantage is a merit of Looney Spoon's ability to teamfight. We've seen time and again they get out of teamfights with red health flashing bars and everybody, but nobody falls. So Ash is able to clean up kills left and right, whereas Lord Ultra Titan hasn't had that luxury. He's kind of had to fend for himself a bit more in these teamfights because there just hasn't been as much coordination. Yeah, I... So yeah, that was a lot of delay there coming out from Looney Spoons, and the reason why is you saw uh, I'm sh just go back and pick up that Bloodthirster, finishing it up on the Ash, so she is incredibly strong and just in time for the dragon. Speaking of that dragon, the the alarm bell's ringing here, and it's Dysentery Gary going to top lane along with Hiddles Heidelsai. I'm not really sure. They're just uh, ignoring the dragon being going on. They have vision of it happening. I thought maybe they might have been going for a Baron play. Heimerdinger is known for being able to quickly burn down that objective. Might have been trying to just make a play happen in exchange for the dragon, but whoa! Was that a flash we saw? That was yeah, a flash he flashed the he flashed the ash arrow. Uh, doesn't mean he means he doesn't have it here for Shade Hendrix, who has that frozen mallet. There is no escaping this gnar and a hook from the corner. Golden Beaver has been on point with these thresh skill shots. And uh, how convenient for Looney Spoons here as they continue to chase it out. Righteous Glory Panda KD doesn't have any hard CC, but he's got plenty of slows. There is no Corky here for this fight. This is just disaster waiting to happen if anything catches on. It doesn't look like going to get in range. A boomerang is probably not going to be enough. Yeah, well, they got the pick off on the Varus. It's still 20 seconds off. They, If they want to, they could still go for this Baron. I don't think they're at that much threat, but they're aware of the poke potential mm. coming out from Heimerdinger. I would have liked to see maybe a little less commitment for the for the Gragas and Heimerdinger. I think you, if you can force a team fight to happen at that Baron, you're going to win it anyways, and so maybe saving your cooldowns for that might have been yeah. more important, as well as securing that Baron objective. But if they don't feel comfortable about it, they don't have the vision advantage, I understand waiting it out. Uh, you don't want to risk it. You're up, you're up 6k gold. You just got that dragon. You just got to pick off. Everything's going in your favor. There's no reason to pull a Dignitas and throw at Baron. As I said, though, Heimerdinger does have the ability to take that objective very quickly, so they have to be vigilant with their vision control near the uh, Baron Pit on the side of Looney Spoons, because if they ever let that area grow dark, Heimerdinger could make quick work of Baron. Yeah, I, I don't know if you know this, but Dysentery Gary's a sneaky one. I mean, his name's Dysentery Gary. Somehow he got away with that. <laughs> Anyways... There's actually a big wave here pushing out. It rhymes, for... so we can forgive it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's acceptable. Um, which I can't say as much for pocket banana. Those are just two words that should not be associated. Um, <laughs> uh, it looks like that uh, I'm sh is going to end up clearing out this bot wave. She has a lot of farm on her. I'm not really sure that Ash is the best place to put this farm right now. I think Echo could use uh, the finishing of that death cap or what he ends whatever he ends up turning that needlessly large rod into. Um, but that should signal Geology Rocks, hey, Ash is in the bot lane, we should try to pick a fight here, or maybe even get a pick off. But once again, you have Quirky split pushing and Heimerdinger just back, they're not syncing up and they're not looking for fights or pick offs when they need to. Uh, I mean, they've got the tools to do so as well, it's not like they're playing a team that can't make a fight happen, they've got Ragus and Alistair, they can choose to fight, or at least choose to trade cooldowns. 
they both both teams it seems like are unwilling to pull the trigger and there's there has to be some sort of accidental impetus to a team fight a, a <laughs> dragon or a baron happening before these guys decide to duke it out or maybe pocket banana just chilling yeah, face checking the wrong bush. Golden Beaver's gonna go down now for his hubris to counter engage. Panda KD tossed back by the Gragas ulti. Ash will disengage, but they've Ooh. given up a kill here. So yeah, they gave up the kill on that Thresh, but look at all the damage that they've gotten now. I was waiting for Uniter Flash to go in there oh, and Lord, maybe. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, he nearly, nearly goes down. I think he got the benefit of a heal there, and he will snipe off Panda KD, but a beautiful Naughty will toss them back into the parallel convergence. I'm Shush is godlike. Nobody has touched him, and he is cleaning up this fight. Gorgeous, gorgeous teamwork right there. Yeah, so that was really good by Nar to push back everyone into that parallel convergence. The circles were happening there for Blue Team. What a great job by United Flash, our United Flash on the Echo, being able to land that four-man stun. Just let I'm Shush take advantage of that stun. Just sit there and just throw out auto attacks left and right, and they cleaned up that team fight so so well while being four v five. I mean, I've said it before. I. I I think that team fight in particular, I can't say that about every instance in this game, but I think that team fight in particular was just an example of a mechanical outplay. Nar got a gorgeous ulti because Theology Rocks kind of gave him one. They stood all clumped together. They were face checking into a bush. It wasn't quite as well coordinated as it could have been, but. They're still not out of this one. No major objectives fell. I, the inhibitor turret in the mid lane is pretty major, but the inhibitor isn't down. The Baron isn't down. And as we coast into the late game, those are the big things. Those are what you have to get. Yeah, and we'll be watching out for that. And I think one of the important things is when you're contesting those, obje or those objectives, when both teams are credibly nearby each other, um, it's the poke that goes on. It's the damage that goes on before the big alts are spent, before all this important CC goes out. If you notice, that last fight was the first fight where you actually saw Geology Rock significantly trunked when they started that fight. A lot of times you kind of saw it the other way, or there was a pickoff on Geology Rocks' side, but that was the first time that they were properly chunked, and they just get AoE so easily when that happens. Uh, when they're not, not able to get to the backline of Uniter Flash or I'm Shush, which isn't something they've been able to do this entire game, uh, except for maybe one or two fights, and that's going to cost them fights if this continues to happen. Like we might see Looney Spoons again return to the Baron Pit, take up once again that dance. And this time, they've got enough of a gold lead, enough of an item advantage, that I think they can just start it right off, yeah? Yeah, they're just going to do it. They put down the pink ward, and they're feeling confident. Once again, it's Geology Rocks who are split, and Looney Spoons who are together. And they burn that, that Baron down very quickly. Shade Hendrix again over the wall. Meganar, he's going to flash right out right afterwards, though. He wanted the fight, but then he changed his mind. Yeah, this is the classic... Uh attitude of you make an amazing play like stunning the bears against a wall and then you just yell team team <laughs> and team isn't there and then you're like well i'm kind of committed but i'm just gonna flash out <laughs> it would have been so good <laughs> but they got the baron that's good enough they are probably gonna trade it for this dragon uh, yeah, no, so the, no miracle it's, steal. it's three dragons apiece, which would be more important if the gold lead were any closer, but it is 10k and the Baron just occurred. Um, I would look for uh, I would look for Looney Spoons to maybe have that Nar split push the top lane and then just push down that bottom lane or the mid lane. If you remember, there's an open inhib now, and with those Baron minions, you can just sit there and siege that inhib for quite a while and not be threatened like you would under a turret. So I would really like them to see that, take out that inhib, transition to either top or bot lane, and continue uh, wiping the floor with uh, those amazing ultimate combinations. Now the Wombo combo has truly been on their side this game. But now we are 45 minutes into the game. As I said, these matches can go fairly long in gold, silverish level. You're which telling me, man. Which composition do you really think will shine better if we make it to six items apiece here? Okay, so all else equals six items, I think... That I think it's ridiculously even how these teams could actually end up. Um, but I do have to give the edge at this point um, to Looney Spoons. Essentially, I just know the mechanical attitude of these players, and I think 
that Hybrid Digger is not doing enough in these fights. Um, Corky is kind of falling off and is oh. not able to pull off. Varus is really, really trigger happy on all of his summoner spells, and I think that uh, Ash is just not getting threatened in fights at all. There's a Gregus yeah. sometimes jumping on her, but no damage is ever coming on her. The foot is uh, like, Jaji rocks are always on the back foot here and they really need to do something different to turn it around. Maybe a Gragas and Alistar flank is the way to victory for them. And you do have the Alistar waiting around from the side, as you said, with Gragas, and they've got the Righteous Glory there, so they can make something happen, and just they just have to choose to do it. And Lord Cole will get a very nice pick off there. Adds nearly all the damage, as you said, from the side of Looney Spoons eliminated and they are chasing through the jungle flash from Heidi side but it doesn't quite connect hook from golden beaver to keep his friends safe this chase is really good here for uh nar yeah. he's just split pushing top the whole time and it's forcing geology rocks to go back and uh respond to it he's already gotten half this tower down remember he still has baron minions going and uh he might actually get this tower probably won't get the and hook banana no oh no that is so, yeah. really bad that basically equalizes the advantage they could have gotten from killing that ash yeah i i think that's the pickoffs that they kind of need. They need to get things like that Ash kill because that's so much of their damage. When you run a two threat composition like Looney, uh, Looney Spoons are having. United Flash wins that 1v1. Uh, yeah, so like when I said there are two threats, that means there's going to be one threat left when one of them's dead and you can't go 1v1 against him. <laughs> I mean, some of them maybe could. I think Dysentery Gary, if he timed his cooldowns in the Zone Hourglass correctly, could probably actually win against United Flash, but Lord Cole does not have that luxury. He didn't build his own Hourglass. He's got no defenses against United Flash's burst and uh, kind of dies to it very yeah. quickly. So you did say, like, I was talking about the Gragas Alistar flank, but surprisingly that Ash just got picked off just out of nothing. Like, yeah. the Gragas and Alistar weren't even needed, and it was just a really good pickoff. So they need to kind of start replicating that, ward up their own jungle, kind of look for those sorts of pickoffs um, where you can isolate someone without the tanks there. And uh, if you can do that, if you can eliminate a lot of the damage that's coming out, then yeah, you can start to tear through these these tanky, tanky champions like Nar and Nunu, which are going to be tough to go through, but you do have Double Blade of the Ruined King on your attack damage carries here, and you have a Void Staff as well on Heimerdinger. So it's you have the potential. The potential is definitely there. It's just going to take a long time. You know what we haven't seen that I anticipated seeing this game? Well, we did see it a tiny bit, but not very much. It hasn't played a pivotal role. Dysentery Gary hasn't really been split pushing. He's been involved in more team fights than I expected. And he's got the teleport, he's got that upgraded yellow trinket. He's had that for a long time, got it very early. But we haven't seen him putting on the side lane pressure. Yeah, that's something that I think is more of a symptom of just the kind of not high level play, is you see these summoner spells kind of going to waste later on in the game. If you notice in like high, high level play, the teleports will always be used to start a fight. Someone will always be split pushing because, oh my goodness. Oh no, that's a stun into Lord Ultra Titan. You cannot stand around in that bubble. It is very dangerous. And your flash will pick up another solo kill. Yeah, so that's once again just getting picked off. But yeah, I, I think... When you take teleport, you force yourself to use it so, so, so much, and when you don't use it, you're just like down a summoner spell at that point. You would much rather have an ignite, and it's really costing. No. Uh, Pocket Banana. Here. The Unbreakable Will will keep him safe for a little while, but the hook onto Dysentery Gary, he finally chooses to go into golden mode. Pocket Banana is still the focus of Uniter Flash. He does get the kill, but I think they could have taken down Dysentery Gary. Either way, they get a kill. There's the burst, though, and Echo will fall. Yeah, and that tower's still alive, and it also still has that shield on it, so they won't be able to dive anything. Nar will be going for this inhib, though. And yet, oh my goodness, oh, okay, they they're still fighting. Fight. That is so... Dude, both carries are still alive. I'm Shush is going to take a big chunk from the Piercing Arrow. Heidi Sai is looking to continue the fight. He knows that they have the advantage here. But if they can keep cutting back like this, nope! They cannot. The burst from Heimerdinger gets the kill. They will trade one back, though, because of the elongated and somewhat messy nature of the chase. Yeah, if you're Golden Beaver, though, you're totally fine with that. You got an inhib, and you, like, they couldn't respond to it. But the thing that I thought was important in that kind of, like, half-fight, half-not fight there was the Heimerdinger Zonias. You saw as soon as he pressed that, it forced the aggro of the rest of Looney Spoons to go away from them, and they never reacquired it. So they never actually ended up killing out that Heimerdinger, where he is usually the first one to fight or fall in every single fight here. So a really good uses of Zonias can completely make the enemy team forget about you, especially at this level of play. And, I mean, the focus turned from him onto the best possible place. If you need to have someone being damaged on your team, you want it to be the Alistair. Especially 
after he's already burnt all his cooldowns, after he's not going to have too much more impact on the rest of the fight. Pocket Banana dying there wasn't the worst thing, because it kind of delayed the rest of the fight, allowed them to clean up something. But, as you said, inhibitor falling means, despite all that, despite the well-timed Zonias, despite the well-played fight, we are going to see Geology Rocks still losing overall. Yeah, but they're going to get this fourth dragon, probably. Um, I, I like their plan here. You you can potentially win team fights if you have five dragons. And so they're going to on their way for that. They do have to wait another six minutes before they can even start thinking about that. So we're going to hit the hour mark, probably, in this game. Pocket Banana but, uh, headbutted Uniter Flash the wrong direction. He's going to still get the chase here. Unbreakable Will will eventually break, despite its name. Uniter Flash comes over the wall, woo! and he gets the kill. Yeah, that's a lot of damage coming out from Uniter Flash from that 751 AP Echo at this point. That is incredibly scary. Um, and yeah, you need to contest this Baron somehow, and you're not going to do it when it's 4v5 and your Gragas just whiffed his ult. ID Psy now, very low on health. Not as many cooldowns as he'd like, but Dysentery Gary is starting to have much more of an impact during these fights, much more of an impact on this game. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you just saw that, but he kind of one-shotted the Echo. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Uh, so it happened yeah. so quickly, I couldn't cast it. it. It's it's more or less, at this point, whoever can get the jump on the other team is, is going to be winning these fights. Whoever can get that one key pick off of that one key target out of the way and down can definitely, definitely turn the tide in these fights. That's what happens when you take a game to six items, when you take a game to 55 minutes. But to be fair, we haven't even seen six items so far yet from everyone. Nar is still working on his Blade of the Ruined King. Speaking of... Speaking mm. of Nar, I would like to point out that Shade Hendrix has not died this entire game. What a baller, man. That's a good showing. Well, so he hasn't had any pressure just because he's been pushed into tower during lane, so there's no threat of early ganks. And by the time he actually, uh, he always had that Nar bar, so, and they never really focused him just because they focus, they realize, okay, if we leave the Nar alive and we kill the Ash and Echo, we can still win fights. Um, he, he will need to die eventually in order to them for, uh, for Geology Rocks to win the game, but yeah, just not seen as, as much of a threat these days. What are you doing, doing? You trying to diminish his accomplishments with your analysis? Yeah, he's Come on. uh he did really well. Let him have this. No. I no? I will nope. Nope, sorry. <laughs> nah, it's all dude good. is the ruiner of all fun. I mean, why do you think they brought me here? Anyways, uh so it's gonna be a lot, a lot of vision coming out for uh, Looney Spoons, which I really, really like. They're warding up this red side jungle, prepping for that Baron, getting the sideways pushed up, everything that you need to do to secure this Baron. Let's see if they're going to be able to get it, though. Or it has been reset. Everybody's here. All the cooldowns are up. Except for one or two flashes here or there. But yeah, aside from, like, three flashes, every ult, every summoner is available. All the cards are on the table. We're going to have to see who makes the better play. Yeah, and I think that relies on the on, on the pickoff, like I mentioned earlier. It's whoever gets the first, like, important damage off. Uh, most of the time, it's Ben Uniter Flash, and I like the aggression shown from him. If he can get off important damage on an important like target, Cole. like right now. He's coming over the wall. Dysentery Gary gets stunned up. Chunk down below half. Uniter Flash will Zonia's to avoid all forms of retribution. Now Pocket Banana, placing himself in front of his allies, will fall for them, but somebody still dies. Oh, nice Ash Arrow! Following up on this fight, Lord Ultra Titan gonna be flayed backwards in an absolute zero. Yeah, it's very, very chilly. Down to the bones. He's, he's a dead man. Yeah, so that's the bot lane dead there from Geology Rocks. And again, that was just Uniter Flash being extremely aggressive, getting a nice amount of damage on the Hybrid Digger. And when you have Zonias, you're not afraid of getting, like, jumped on just because you can wait for your team. Um, and that's what he did there, able to turn it into two kills with a nice Ash Arrow coming out. And they should be able to turn this into at least one Hib in Hib and possibly a Baron and possibly maybe even the game. Uh, they look like they're going to be going for the safer call of Baron here, backing off towards that. A little bit difficult to push in multiple turrets against a Heimerdinger, so I think this is the better call. But yeah, either right. way, it is a definitive advantage for Looney Spoons. Yeah, definitely. Um, are you a beaver believer? I am a believer? That would just become believer. Yeah, it would literally just become believer. <laughs> but somebody might think you're just a lever who bees. I don't think anyone would think that. I don't, I don't think anyone would think that, but Heidi Sai thought he could get a steal. He was wrong. And now we have Shade Hendrix. He has the Narbar full, and he is going to be showing it to Dysentery Gary. The Zonias will just be buying some time here. He is most certainly a dead Yordle. 
Yeah, they should be turning this just into that last inhib, or sorry, that second inhib that respawned as soon as they went for that Baron. Now with the Baron minions, now with two dead, as well as Dysentery Gary being one of them. United Flash does have to watch out there, but as long as they can ride on the backs of the Ash. Lord calls us a whole burst of damage. Ash does fall, as you said. Pocket Banana too tanky for them to take down. They focused him way too much. They still might be able to get this game, despite a few mistakes in the enemy base. Only Pocket Banana, well, I was about to say, only Pocket Banana alive, but even that is fixed. And uh, it looks like they've got Baron Buff minions, and they've got turrets to bring them to. This All might right. be GG. I'm not going to lie. It was actually the Narth that was really important there. <laughs> it was actually Shade Hendrix who did a lot of the work that fight. Basically, he never even got focused, and he's doing 229 damage in auto attack. He's actually really Dang. strong. I was just uh, giving him a lot of shit. Eight. Give the guy some I, uh, I stand corrected. Perfect game. Yeah, so that was really well played by Looney Spoons. Um, you saw them come out with a really interesting strategy of picking up the Nunu jungle as well as the Echo mid without going in for sort of uh, that really, really early aggressive uh, aggressive early game because they have the uh, because they have the Nunu jungle. Instead, waiting it out, playing a 55 minute game, and ending up picking the win here. Uh, pretty convincing, wouldn't you say? Seemingly so. I mean, every full-on team fight that we saw that didn't begin with a pick on one side or the other, that was just a five-on-five -five display of skill team fight, was won by the side of Looney Spoons and won pretty well. They didn't give up unnecessary kills. That last one was a little bit messy, but to be fair, they had blood in their eyes. They saw the victory. They wanted it bad. Other than that, they were focused. They were coordinated. And it was a good showing. Yeah, definitely. Um... All right, so let's remember, this is a best of two uh, series here. We're going to be going to a short intermission shortly, um, but just a reminder that we're going to reset everything. We're going to let the coaches give it, give a... Give the coaches a chance to talk to their teams, figure out what if they want to change up their strategy, though, if they want to bring out a completely new comp, if they want to do the same comp but work on it. Um, I am obviously looking forward to just something completely wacko, something completely out of the blue, but who knows. Um, but yeah, I, I want to see the changes that these teams make, and I want to see the the uh, what the changes the coaches have in store for us. Um, I believe we will end up talking to the coaches eventually, just kind of getting their uh, breakdown of kind of what 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 went wrong that first game and uh, how they transitioned it into the second game. But for now, we're going to be going to a quick little break. Uh, I am actually going to be done for the night. Octavian is going to keep casting, but in case you're wondering, uh, I am Dune Bogey. I was casting with Octavian and. Uh, Hey man, that was that was a pretty good cast, wouldn't you say, for your first one? It was pretty fun, yeah. Thanks for uh, having me along, and I hope to be seeing some more of you. Yeah, sounds like uh, you're going to be still doing that play-by-play -play next game, so looking forward to listening to that. You get to hear me shout some more. Oh yeah. All right, guys, so like I said, we're going to be heading to a quick little intermission, and uh, we'll be right back with game two. But as soon as I arrive home, yeah, I moved on something. 